So what's going on? Welcome back to another episode of the TOEFL ITP. If this is our Arsenio ZSL podcast, thank you for tuning in. For those of you on YouTube, I thank you for tuning in. I love some of the wonderful super fans that I have. Thank you so much. And today is another new edition test. No, this is not Longman from the past. This is what you are going to be seeing. Today is the new edition structure test, 15 questions. For those of you watching on YouTube or IG, you're going to get about three questions. The rest of you who have paid for the TOEFL ITP structure test, uh, well, not test, but the structure course that is available in the link down below, you will get the full 15 questions. So with these new edition uh, tests, man, I break down a lot of different things. But if you're not so good at grammar, it's all about the process of elimination, identifying the subject verb agreement, realize that, okay, this one doesn't need an extra verb. Okay, does this need to be made into an adjective clause? Okay, is this a word order? Is this in a positive? These are the things that are taught in 23 segments in my structure course, or obviously me breaking down a couple of things that I have right here on the screen. So that being said, let's dive in. Here we go. Grunts. That's the subject of the sentence, comma, colorful marine fish, comma, are named for the sounds they make, space, grinding their teeth, comma, which are in the throat. So what we are trying to do here, okay, we're trying to combine two clauses, okay? So what we have, we have A, by, B, and by, C, because, by, D, that, by. So when we look at this, it said we already have the subject, we have the main verb in are named, okay, past participle, for the sounds they make, space grinding their teeth. So we're just trying to combine, obviously, after they, we have the main verb make, and then we're just trying to combine those two right there. So are we looking for, are we adding information? No. And the reason why we are not adding information is because obviously we already have, well, grunts, they make, okay, and then which are in the throat. So we already have two subjects, we already have two main verbs. So to be honest with you, because we already have which, we're, we could hurry up and quickly take out that in B, okay? We're not going to have a that and a which or a which and a which in the same sentence, perhaps coming up soon, but in this case, no. Because showing a result, right? That's what because does, it so shows a result. I don't like blue because my reason for this is because, see what I mean? No, this is not one of those. So are we trying to, use the coordinating conjunction and with the preposition by or by alone. So grunts, which are colorful marine fish, are named for the sounds they make and by grinding their teeth, which are in the throat, or are named for the sounds they make by grinding their teeth, which are in the throat. In this case, all we need is a preposition to combine the two. We do not need and because uh, this is one of those non-defining relative clauses with an additional appositive, meaning colorful marine fish, which is just a little detail they put there. But if I were to take out colorful marine fish, we just have a simple non-defining relative clause. Grunts are named for the sounds they make by grinding their teeth, which are in the throat. That's it. We got a couple of verbs. We have a relative clause because we have which, there it is. We're still going to use a preposition. We're not trying to add anything, right, to an idea that we already have. And that's why we're not going to use and by. It's a little difficult. It's going to make it easy, but at least we were able to get rid of B and C. And then by given the fact, ooh, okay, and a positive, it's lesson three on my structure. Okay, make sure you go back and review it if you already bought my course. Um, and understand the non-defining relative clauses, which can, you know, you can use which, like grunts, comma, which make, what is it? Which makes sounds by grinding their teeth, comma, have, you see what I mean? I'm just trying to put it together, but you understand how non-defining relative clauses work. Subject, comma. Which verb, da, 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 comma, followed by a main verb, 
You've seen this many times. So always keep that in mind. We're not trying to use and within a non-defining relative clause and you will never see a coordinating conjunction in a non-defining relative clause, not as an answer. Maybe it's something that's already in it, but not as an answer. All right, I hope that makes sense. Make sure you review some of the a positive uh, exercises that I have on my course so that you can understand this more in detail, okay? Let's go into number two. Perhaps the most striking of all biological events is the Silurian period. Space of vascular plants. Now, here we go. Perhaps the most striking of all biological events is the Silurian period. A, then the evolution, they, I'm sorry, A, I'm sorry, then as in T-H-A-N, there's no comparison being made here. Or B, being the evolution of vascular plants. C, the evolution of vascular plants. Or D, was the evolution of vascular plants. Perhaps the most striking of all biological events in the Silurian period was the evolution of vascular plants. This is very easy because we are missing a main verb. That's it. Where's my verb? I always tell you, just as I told you at the very beginning of this, the verb, the verb, the main verb. We do not have one in the sentence. Therefore, we need one. A, there's no comparison. We're not going to use a gerund or create a gerund clause because we don't got a main verb. C is just the evolution created in a positive. No, we do not have a main verb. D, as was, that is a main verb. Always look for that main verb. You're gonna see it come up a number of times going throughout these, throughout the entire 15 questions here. Let's go into number three. For those of you on YouTube and IG, this is your last question. Okay. Like vocal auditory languages, space. Different sign languages in use throughout the world. Do you have a subject? No. Do you have a verb? No. This is both in my structure and my written expression courses. Remember there's a lesson, there and it, there happen as a subject of a sentence? Yes. Now, because we do not have a main verb anywhere, at least you could point out and say, where is the main verb? I don't see one. Fantastic. Let's get rid of D, many, and C, and many, because we need a main verb, right? Now, because we don't have a subject of the sentence, we need one that acts as a subject of a sentence, not a relative pronoun acting as an adjective clause, because we still don't have a subject. Therefore, B, there are many, is your answer. A, which are many, we still don't have a subject. Like vocal auditory languages, there are many different sign languages in use throughout the world. There is your subject of the senses. Now remember, go back to the very beginning lessons of both the structure and the written expression and go over there and it. You're gonna understand it more. Looking at this, you're gonna be able to refer back to the course to say, Ah, oh, Arsenio, I see how you can use there. Master this, you're going to score big points. That's all there is to it. So for those of you tuning in on YouTube and Instagram, thank you very much. For those of you here on my course, let's continue. Number four, 